Tom, you know, we, we have this dilemma. We have a randomized phase two trial of Everolimus versus Lenvatinib versus the combination demonstrating a clear improvement in progression-free survival uh, with some adverse event profiles that suggest that you have to pay a price for that extension in progression-free survival. But we also have an FDA approval of this, uh, this agent in combination. Um, to talk a little bit about the data set, uh, the positives and the challenges, and help the community doctor know when this might be a reasonable alternative. Yeah, certainly. So I, I was blessed to be part of the development plan for the Levantinib um, Everolimus, and as you all know, that was a phase two trial that was recently reported uh, this past year and subsequently received approval, as Bob mentioned, uh, Lenvima, the, the, the brand name Levantinib, and just two weeks ago in early uh, May. And that trial was designed um, for patients in the, really the refractory patient population. They were essentially second line patients with clear cell histology predominantly. And lenvatinib was an interesting, the biologic uh, uh, rationale for lenvatinib is that it's an FGF inhibitor. And we know that that blocking FGF may be an escape, angiogenic escape um, mechanism. We have tried FGF inhibitors in the past, as you know, and they have not really uh, proved to be fruitful. But this particular drug also combines a VEGF inhibition, which was quite strong. And so there was a rationale to take that agent, combine it with a, a, a agent with a different mechanism of action, mTOR inhibitor, and I think you hadn't heard this in this panel uh, um, today, but we do believe, I, I would hope, that mTOR still has a role to play. We just haven't really figured out that patient population, but combining a, a VEGF inhibitor with this potential FGF blockade, which may be an escape mechanism, with an mTOR inhibitor, um, and, and that was the trial. And this was the, the first combination that has shown um, to be beneficial of the modern TKI combination studies. In fact, it's the only one. Um, the BEV interferon was a different breed of a combination strategy. Um, and the results were quite stellar. I participated on the trial, put the patients on the trial, and they seemed to tolerate it. So despite the what appears to be maybe excess toxicity, um, when I compare the toxicity profile of this drug and lay it next to the toxicity profile of Meteor and lay it next to the toxicity profile of Nevo with all the nuances of reporting, all-cause all, all cause toxicity versus treatment-related toxicity that the different drugs have been reported as, I see just slight differences in toxicity in the patients. And I can tell you my patients uh, on trial were able to be managed, as you would expect. Most of the toxicities we saw were, were class-effect toxicities with mTOR inhibitor and with VEGF inhibitor. Patients did require dose reductions. And, um, and the, the dose between 14 and 18 milligrams with 5 milligrams of Verolimus seemed to be the kind of more practical dose that most people would tolerate. The, the, we talked about a trifecta. There was a trifecta with this agent. There was a response rate benefit. There was a PFS um, benefit of the combination of 14.6 months, I believe. And then uh, um, the response rate benefit was on, I believe, invest, independent review, almost 30%, and I, with investigator assessed, it was in the 40 percentile range. And an overall survival benefit is the second opinion. I think that the downside has already been brought out is that it's a randomized phase two trial. And so I think there's some skepticism uh, uh, maybe rightfully placed about how does one interpret this in that setting. But um, for myself, um, um, as uh, putting patients on the trial, I found it to be an active. I've had a patient on the trial that was kind of a spokesperson patient for the drug who had failed uh, two VEGF inhibitors and immunotherapy that received this combination therapy and had a response. So clearly, I think we've all seen that. There are drugs that work in patients. And, and so I think this adds to that. Where we sequence it um, is going to be a challenge. And I think um, um, it's a welcome addition. Um, but now it's going to be how do we actually sequence that in. I think we're going to want to give our patients that, which has been brought up already by Dr. Tanir um, when he talked about um, Everolimus, that this drug would be naturally combined. Anytime you want to use Everolimus, you're going to want to use this combination for sure. Um, and that, in my mind, lands itself as a fourth line position. Um, the question, where do we use Exidinib then if you're using this now fourth line? First and, line, Exidinib first line, with in combination. Okay, there we go. So that's, that, that has been that's solved. That's the line for Exidinib. Um, so clearly there's going to be a role for it. And the, the, the question is going to be is how will the data mature? How as we dissect this data out? We're presenting data, uh, which is a poster today, I mean, a poster at this meeting. Um, with updated results, how we sequence that, does it have a role earlier, second or third, and, that, and we'll just have to see. Dan? Yeah, I just want to make one 
comment too, because I think there's something unique about this combination. When we looked at combinations of everolimus with uh, sunitinib, it was not well tolerated at all. We saw new toxicities, hemolytic syndromes, and, 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 and major cytopenias that were just not tolerable even in the first cycle. Mm -hmm. So this is, there's something different about this combination that makes it tolerable in a multi-center prospective study right. like this. So I, I think we have to recognize that I wouldn't go trying to extrapolate this data into other TKIs plus everolimus. Mm -hmm. And then we have had some studies where we've looked at bevacizumab and everolimus in combination. And there, you know, we had seen some increased toxicity, but we didn't get the efficacy. So I think there's something, there's something to this combination. I think it needs to be studied more. We need to understand it more. But these are, this is different from what we've seen in the past when we've tried to combine agents with uh, everolimus. Tom? Just, just a, a fi final thought there. The, the drug was approved, Lenvima. It already has a regulatory approval for thyroid cancer. It received this label extension and a new indication in kidney cancer as a full approval. Um, and so um, there will be a post-marketing commitment for a trial, but um, they, don't not, they don't need to repeat this trial as a phase three. And so the actual plans, um, which will hopefully be made public soon, will be to study this earlier in the disease course, as you would ex or it's a phase three um, in, in, in likely a frontline setting. So that phase three in the frontline.